Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is great to see all of your beautiful, smiling faces. Well, it is 2020, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's okay if you're not smiling. I, I understand. I'm, I'm right there with you. Anyways, I thank you for coming back and checking out my channel. So I hope you guys saw my San Juan videos, my Colorado adventure extravaganza. If you didn't, be sure to check them out. Uh, I think the fourth episode will be coming out after this video, and they're definitely a longer form, more mellow type of video, which brings me to my topic of this video. I had a user suggest, hey, why don't you make some shorter videos, some quick tips, how do you shoot this? So I thought, you know, no one's ever done this, and uh, I'm definitely not stealing any ideas from other YouTubers. I came up with the, an original catchy title called um, Three Minute Thursdays. So the idea is that I'm gonna teach you something in less than three minutes, and I'm gonna to try to stick to it. Might not be every Thursday, but we're definitely gonna try. So, let's get going. All right, so today we're talking about tone curves, and let's see if I can teach you everything there is to know about tone curves in three minutes. So let's put that timer on the clock and let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is tell you that I think that tone curves are the most powerful tool in Lightroom, hands down. They can change your exposure, they can add contrast, they can manipulate colors, they can add stylizations, and I guarantee you that the majority of the photos that you see on social media, Instagram, things like that, are probably stylized using the tone curve. So now that I've sold it on you, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna use three images for three different steps in the tone curve, and we're gonna start out pretty basic. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have any other edits besides white balance and exposure, and I have not added any adjustments to my tone, my tone curve. Uh, typically in my edits, a lot of the times, literally all I do is add medium or strong contrast, but for example's sake, I'm going to show you how we manually do that. So, you're gonna add a point in the middle, that's gonna control your mid-tones, so you can go up and down to decrease or increase your exposure. And I'm gonna add a point in the shadows and add a point in the highlights. And I'm just gonna create a quick little S-curve. And literally, all this is doing is just adding contrast in your image. You're darkening your shadows, brightening your highlights, and it's basically like using the contrast slider. You might be asking, why don't we use the contrast slider? And the reason is, we can get way more precise. So for example, the contrast lighter is always just going to increase the highlights and the shadows at the same consistency. Whereas here, if we really wanted to darken the shadows, but barely brighten the highlights, we could. Something else we can do, just like that's already in the preset, you can add another little dot here to darken the area between the shadows and the darks. So the other thing, quick tip, is that to add a dot, you just click anywhere where you want it. To remove a dot, you just double click it. That's the first part of the tone curve. All right, so in our next image, we're just going to use the tone curve to create a slightly styled look. So let's go to that image. And as you can tell, all I've done is change the white balance and change the exposure. We're gonna come down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the medium contrast setting. And I'm going to double click this point and get rid of it. And then all I'm gonna do is raise up this black point like this, boom. Now. You have that faded look that you see on a ton of Instagram walls, posts, stuff like that. And we did it within, I don't know what, 15 seconds. Uh, you might want to also add a point back in to kind of bring some of the blacks back down, but you still have that faded look. Now, if I turn this off and on, look at the difference in this image with just adjusting the tone curve. All we did, raise the blacks to look, give us that faded film look. Now the other thing you can do is bring down the whites to kind of give this blown out look. Uh, that's up to you, styled look, that's tip number two. All right, so in our last image, all we're gonna do is take what we've learned from the first two images and we're gonna start manipulating color a little bit to add slightly more stylization. So let's open up our image. I wanna show you that I have some basic edits. Again, white balance adjustments. I brought up the shadows a little bit, brought down the highlights a little bit, and just added a tiny bit of presence sliders here that I don't think will make a huge difference in the image. Uh, so we're gonna start out, we're actually not going to adjust the contrast first. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add an S-curve 
to each of the colors up here. And each of these represent RGB, red, green, and blue. And each curve will give you the ability to adjust those colors based off of the curve. So you go up, it's more red. You go down, it's more blue. So we've added the red one. Let's add the green one. And I really want to pull out the green in the shadows like that. I'm going to add the blue one. And go back to the red, kind of bring up the highlights a little bit more. And I want the mid-tones of the blue to look just a little bit more present. And then finally, I'm going to go into my main tone curve and give us a little bit of contrast back into the image. The reason I do this last when I do this is because when you manipulate the S-curves on the colors, it's going to add some contrast in. So I don't want to overdo it. And the final thing is I'm going to bring up those blacks just like on the last photo and bring down this just a little bit. Now let's look at the before and after. Before, after, before, after. All right, that's it. Pretty sure we nailed it. Less than three minutes, almost positive. You learned everything there is to know about tone curves and I cannot stress enough how powerful tone curves are. I'm gonna put these images, this image, up again. This is the before and this is the after, with just changing the tone curves. If I was stranded on an island, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, <laughs> but if I was stranded on an island and Lightroom, for some reason, I had it, and the only tool I had, I had to pick one, it would be tone curves. Uh, that, it doesn't matter, that's <laughs> a stupid, stupid analogy. Anyways, if you can master tone curves, I really do feel like you can take your photography from starting out to next level. And in my opinion, the image that we finished with could be an image you see on someone's Instagram feed. It could be the style that they use through all of their images to kind of make them look together or look like a portfolio. And it took barely any time. In my opinion, the other thing that you can do is just play around with the tone curves. Find an image from someone you like, a landscape photographer, an Instagrammer, uh, a fashion photographer, anybody. Find an image you like by them, then find an image that you've taken in the same lighting situation. So whether it's moody and overcast or sunny and bright, take your image and try to get it to look like their image. I'm not saying the sharpness, I'm not saying the detail or anything like that, just the style, those faded blacks, those reds in the upper, you know, the highlights those kind of things. See if you can find or figure out how to make your image stylized like theirs just using the tone curve. And in my opinion, doing that will teach you all of the tools of the tone curve. Just playing around with adding some dots, adding some S curves, bringing up the red blacks, bringing down the blue highlights, stuff like that. I think that's one of the best ways you can learn how to use it. And it's one of the ways I learned how to use it years ago, and I cannot recommend it enough. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I would love to hear your feedback down below. I'm still pretty new to this, but I will try to keep up with at least making one of these videos every other Thursday amongst all of my location photography videos, which if you haven't checked out, you should definitely get subscribed and I'll be releasing those in the future. Also, if you wouldn't mind just, you know, gently tapping that like button, it's still pretty new here, kind of sensitive, a little shy. I'd like that too. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you again next time.